to rig the traveler and main sheets. That's only one coat of teak oil. Okay, we're making plans here. We're gonna need a little more rigging, unfortunately. We're gonna need some more, two more cheek blocks and two deck organizers for three lines. That's, that's what we're thinking. What song came out in the year you were born, Cyril? I... Now you suddenly forgot? It was Coolio <laughs> and Tupac and it was their like top hit in 96. I'm just can't think of it right now. I was 12. <laughs> Go me. We're back at West Marine. Um, and we're gonna get the things that we need to do the main sale. I'm feeling a little shitty. I've been sick, you guys. I'm on crazy antibiotics because I have, I'm slurring my words now. I have something like a, a staph infection again. Um, so anyways, um, I'm not dying, don't worry. I think it's just stress from everything going on with my boy, my son, and I'm gonna be fine. But I digress, I'm a little loopy right now. I'm not feeling Some great, bleach. I'm eating carbs. Truth be told, I don't like Schaefer. It's crazy, so here we are. And we're deciding between Harkin, Schaefer, I like Spinlock, Lumar. I really, Schaefer's my least favorite, looks wise. I think Harkin looks pretty slick. It's like I don't like buying plastic stuff, but I don't know, sometimes the stainless stuff. Hard choices, difficult choices. In the back, because I see you go one day and I see you've only go one of each. This side. is a table of a woman who is about to do a rigging project. Today, we're going to rig the traveler and main sheet. So on the main sale, we still have to do the mizzen. Kind of, um, but most importantly is the main sale. So we have purchased some spin lock clutches, which is gonna make everything a lot safer than cleats. Um, we already have these blocks that we got with our rigging. So we're going to um, drill some holes for the pad eye, and then we're gonna, we're gonna epoxy them, and then tomorrow we will install the pad eyes. But today we're gonna lay everything out and figure out how much line we need for the traveler and for the main sheet. So, um, amongst other things, but that's what's on tap for today. So let's get going. So what is it that you have here? These are Houdini's bags of treasures. Very special treasures. We're like little old men picking up like nuts and bolts and rigging. <laughs> this is rigging that we've collected. We've actually gone through it now and have picked out all the good stuff, right? What's in here? Oh my goodness, from every sailboat. So that's just blocks? Just every sailboat graveyard. That's like cleats and that's shackles and pad eyes. It's like we're sailing Santa Claus. <laughs> um, this is important because the boat goes so fast you have to add this weight up in the bow so it doesn't take off. Actually, in real news, it hobby horses, so it's really good to have some weight in the bow. Um, Andy Keenan from Keenan Filters suggested cases and cases and cases. What is it, 30 cases of beer or something? Something crazy to weigh the nose down before he goes to the Bahamas, which I think is hilarious. We don't drink beer anymore, remember, you guys? For those of you that have seen season one and two before I took it off the internet, remember how chubbo I got on, what was it, Yingling. Full octane Yingling. I look like a little oh, chipmunk. Yes. That's what I pictures? first started drinking coming Ooh. into the States. There was Yingling on tap there in West Palm. Uh -huh. Ooh, dangerous. Yep, beer bellies, here we don't come. So here's the Traveler. And I think we've decided on cheek blocks. Uh, okay. That we're trying to figure out the angle of the dangle. Looks good. So if this comes all the way back, you don't want to chafe on here or on there. So that's it taught. That's pretty good. I can come all the way back there and the 
traveler, if you bring it all the way to the side, I think that will be fine. Okay. He says we can't do better. Do you believe him? I don't know. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna need two cheek blocks and two deck organizers for three lines. Uh, more cheek blocks, more money, less problems? Is that how that goes? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Oh wow, that's a that's a lot of rise. So he's talking about making a riser block this out of this teak piece. We're talking one inch, and so we're talking two inch. What happened? That shiv's about to fall out. Yeah, it's oh, okay. Cable tied. <laughs> Who the West Marine? It's the type of day that you actually have to grab a basket walking into West. That, I don't like that. <laughs> That's not my favorite. We're here to get the um, deck hardware for the main sheets, main sail, everything to do with the main to run it back as best we can. Hey, so anyway, oh, here we go, deck organizers. How much are those? This is... $70 for that plastic. Yeah. I start to wonder why I don't have enough money to buy coffees. Rigging. This is a proposed loot for the deck fittings. Guys, can we just take a moment to just look at the prices here? $189, $250 for this. I think I'm in the wrong business. Look what we got at West Marine. It's a discount poodle. It doesn't quite fit in the paper bag. You don't fit in the paper bag. <laughs> so what I've got here is all the deck hardware that is gonna be used to control the main sail. And I've got this piece of teak that was from the helm station. I am going to zip all these pieces of hardware onto this piece of teak, and I will outline all of them, and probably go a little bit over in size, and then cut that out with the jigsaw. Wish me luck. So now that all these pieces of hardware are secured, I'm just gonna take a marker and just run an outline around each of these parts. Just unzip these and I'll get started with the jigsaw. That'll be one cheek block riser. Whole bunch more to go. So what I'm doing right now is pre-drilling the holes through the teak risers and also figuring out what size bolts we're going to need when we do our trip to West Marine. So we know this is a 516, I'll drill this hole out to a 516 and then use these to make templates on the deck. It's time to drill holes 
into the deck, which means we need to finalize the locations of the cheek blocks and the deck organizers and the clutches. So we've gone over this and around and around and around, and I think we've come up with a really good solution. My concern is, is that this location is location 1.0 and there's going to be a 2.0, which means that we'll just have to fix some non-skid. So uh, the thing that I've been uh, talking to Cyril about and, you know, talking to lots of people about is the fact that you really don't know what you don't like or what you'd like done differently until you've been sailing a boat. And we have not been sailing this boat. We've been motoring this boat. We've been on this boat, but this boat hasn't been sailed. So the rigging and the configuration of everything is kind of a guesstimation from looking at other Formosas and speaking to, you know, people with more experience. And we're, we're, we're taking our best shot right now. So the places, the spots that we're putting everything down on the deck could be temporary. I hope not. I hope that this is perfect and that we love it and that it's easy. But the fact of the matter is, is that we just don't know. So we're going to do the best practices um, as far as angles to the winch uh, with the clutches and deck organizers and cheek blocks for the traveler and the main sheet um, and hope for the best. So let's go up there and let's start drilling some holes. Let's make some choices. Let's go. It's a little windy out here today. Here's the clutches, and uh, the choice was to go here or to go here. Um, talking about the angle coming from the mizzen because we'd like to run everything back. So uh, we decided that moving forward a little bit would give us a better angle on the winch. Which then leads us to our deck organizer. This is going to be the main sheet, or I'm sorry, the main halyard for the mizzen. Then we're going to have the two sheet lines and the... Um, the main sheet, I'm sorry, the two traveler lines and the main sheet. This is gonna be the main sheet coming down and then the line will come out here, come over this one into that one. Got it, that's right, that's right. That's why I got confused because we got that, that third larger cheek block for the main sheet coming off of that block in the center there. And then those two cheek blocks are going to be for the two sides of the traveler. All right, well now we're sorted. All right, number two is to install this. So we're gonna go down below and measure from this to that to see if we're gonna get into any of the uh, ceiling beams, because that would not be good. Okay, so we're now down here. Four inches, okay, so, is, oh, that's gonna get into the way, huh? Because by the time you put fender washers. Yeah, then, so we're gonna have to go on the other side. Yeah, so let's take a look. So if the disc base is four inches wide. Mm -hmm. It needs to come out here and let's center that to there. So we're going 11 inches back. If you want to be safe, we can go 12 inches, but I think. Okay. Let's cut it in the middle 11 and a half inches back. Okay. Is that going to leave enough uh, room for fender washers? Yeah. If we do. <laughs> Should we ask if the we foreman? Do one foot, it will be super safe. What do you think, the foreman? What do you think? More bolt on, please. Boop. Well, it's a lot further back than we'd anticipated, huh? Not, not too bad. Because that, if I'm in line there, that's where it will be. Great. Looks good. Woo wee! What about that location? Look good? Looks great. <laughs> So now throughout the boat, as Aubrey said, we have many, many skylights. We have cleaned the bottom, put tape, and now we're gonna fill it up with thickened epoxy from the top. Each of the holes have been oversized and taken with a step drill to give it more of a chamfer. While we wait for this to cure, Searle's going to help us with a little maintenance down below. Shower maintenance. We can see here that water is standing still. It's not draining. I pulled the mushroom out already. That needs to be cleaned. You can see the bubbles are coming out very slowly. This means that the filter down in the main bilge is clogged. 
Once down in the bulge, you're just gonna move this out of the way. Be careful those two prongs don't hook any of the wires. It's still draining right now from the bath, but it's got a screw cap for the bottom section. So you're gonna screw this piece off. So that is super nasty. So what I do is I just take paper towel and I pull the basket out of here. And then I clean that off properly, clean the bowl out properly and reassemble it. Ugh. All clean, now I just need to put it back in. I know that's not the most pleasant of jobs, um, but it needs to be done, I say once every two weeks. It really depends how many people are on board. But the moment you see the drainage slow down significantly i would tackle it sooner than later by the time it's like fully clogged and you got that like thick scum line forming on the tub you've left it too long i've added a few valves throughout the boat um, however the primary galley does not have a valve that you have to control by just turning it on and off by the switch panel that means the whole system's down. But moving forward in the boat, we have a shuttle for the forward of the boat and for the aft section of the boat. Under this bilge hatch in the forward stateroom, just aft the mast, we've got two valves here. When they're in line, it means it's flowing. If I shut this off now, that is shutting flow to both the forward and the primary head. So the forward vanity will be shut off and the shower and vanity within the primary bathroom. For the forward vanity, underneath the floor hatch, we've got the two control valves on the side here. Drainage for the forward vanity runs down this hose and joins to the shower drain. Best practices for the water maker. Uh, here in Anacortes, it's been important to be aware of the tide and I think it would be a huge thing there in Florida as well. Remember, we were paying attention to outgoing and incoming tides. So the cleaner the water is around the boat, the better the visibility the less chance of getting a clogged filter. And filters cost money, so I just suggest wait till you've got uh, towards the end of an incoming tide and then run through till the beginning of an outgoing tide. And I think that's a pretty good practice no matter what boat you're on. So when we open the cabinet, we are greeted with a arrangement here. Uh, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn on boost pump. It's this white switch over here. See, this is your boost pressure. You wanna see at around 15 PSI. So the boost pump is this pump over here and that's tied directly into the raw water strainer, which is over here. So as soon as you see a pressure drop, you'll start by checking this filter first so you got your 20 and your five micron filters and you'll find that your 20 micron will clog more often. So from here, the water is flowing through the 20, through the five, and then flows directly underneath the mid-state berth where it goes into the high pressure pump. So we know we got good pressure now. I let it run for about two minutes. Now we're gonna turn on the main pump. You're gonna see this pressure drop down, that's normal. We're gonna turn on the salinity tester. And now we're gonna slowly work this up. You're watching on this gauge here. You wanna get this needle up to the black marker in the green zone. So you're gonna turn 
but do this at a leisurely rate. Do not do this too fast because what you're trying to do is slowly work the air out of the membrane. So there you're getting boost creep. That's because of air. So you need to make sure you're paying attention to this gauge when turning it on. As you can see, there's still bubbles running through there. Over here, you can see we're reading 201, 199, 198. It's dropping down rapidly. I did make water today, so that's normal. After we know that we have good pressure and a good salinity test, We've got this lever on this side here. Going up is to the drain. Going down is to the tank. The ang the direction of the valve handle is showing you the flow. So now we'll quickly switch it over. And now we're creating water and it's flowing directly into the tank.